One of the residents here on Klein Road has welcomed us inside of their home to show you what is happening inside today as that cleanup does begin. And you can see over here that there is debris covering collectibles. Now these court documents here show that that young boy Dante Molinex was taken to the hospital that night by Tyree Bowie. We're going to take you right to this unusual scene though. If you look here right behind me, if you look over to this building over here behind these two silos, firefighters with the York City Fire Department actually tell me that is where the fire started. There was a chance that the name on the governor's office here in the state capitol building was going to change, but that is no longer the case. Picking up small and even large pieces of debris that are on their property and including this. This is going to be a little bit harder to get off of the property this morning of one of the residents, a large piece of metal roofing. You do have a child in the West Shore School District. These letters right here, they may actually look really familiar to you. A new warning this morning about a website offering free Hershey Park tickets. A Hershey Park spokesperson says dozens of people reached out to them about a scam on iPhones that could allow call to receive audio and video before you pick up the phone and Apple is trying to do damage control. We do get more than just the brief coating that we have here, more than an inch or two. The fire hydrant uh, point out that our first responders do need you to make sure that you are clearing the fire hydrants. Um, if you get the snow up to here, just make sure you come out and you clear it. We're going to stick with Jason. We're going to talk to him again. Yeah, you're right. There you go. Do it again. Get the whole, get the whole cafeteria. Yeah. E-A-G-L-E-S, -E Eagle! And milk! So you come over here to the roar o meter go to the funnel and give it your best shot. Here we go in one, two, three. Roar! I was fooled. I was thinking this was going to have a chocolate <laughs> coating when I agreed to do this. It is just powdered. So guys, I'm going to do this, and I don't want to hear anything if I end up spitting this back out because here we go. All right. All right. You, you have, to, you have to give us a little more. Is it okay? It was really, it was really chocolatey for when I licked it, <laughs> but now it just kind of tastes like a maybe a Frito of sorts. A Frito. A Frito. <laughs> okay. You just kind of have to put it down. Oh. Less corn chippy. I also <laughs> don't approve of dipping Oreos in milk because it makes what? things soggy. So <laughs> I don't like that. Shut I the don't. front door. <laughs> what? <laughs> I ain't shut no door, Andrea. No Oreo, no, no milk. Closed, closed. They are separate. I love you milk. are not allowed anymore. Mm, mm. I don't know about that one. It's I'm like, okay. I guess my the United States Geological Survey says a magnitude 3.4 earthquake struck parts of South Central PA. I feel the earth move under my feet. A little Carol King for you uh, this morning. No, I'm sorry. I totally cut you off just to sing Carol King. It's okay. <laughs> now I got that little Thursday morning groove going. You're feeling your baby move? Oh, oh that's baby. wonderful. Oh, baby boy. Fox 43's Linda Weed is pregnant. You see her every day during Fox 43 Morning News. Linda and her husband are expecting a baby boy in October. What you might not know is that the pregnancy did not come easy. Tonight in our Fox 43 Focal Point Infertility, Linda shares her personal story, including two sisters struggling with infertility at the same time with miscarriages and regretful secrets. Our love story started the night we met at a wedding seven years ago. Then came the popping of the question, and then three years ago, I do's. Congratulations, you can kiss your bride. Saying yes to my husband Tom came with the love and responsibility of raising two young boys. We always knew we wanted to add to our family right away, but that didn't exactly happen as quickly as we anticipated. So we started counting days and used a lot of these ovulation tests claiming to predict your most fertile days. After a year of peeing on ovulation and pregnancy sticks, and still, no baby. Time to get serious. We reached out to an infertility specialist. They checked to make sure my tubes were open, ran multiple tests, and even checked my husband's sperm. All came back normal, meaning I fell into the unexplained infertility category. No obvious reason behind my pregnancy problems. I know that you've been through some stress, the whole process of trying to get pregnant. Sandy Hoops is a certified nurse midwife at Woodward and Associates in Hummelstown, Dauphin County. She's one of my current healthcare specialists and has really helped me better understand why infertility answers 
are so open-ended. Sometimes it just takes time. Sometimes there's stress, sometimes it's low thyroid levels, and they might be normal, so giving them a little bit of uh, medication will help them to ovulate. Medication and an IUI, intrauterine insemination, was what I needed. My husband's sperm was placed directly into my uterus while I was ovulating. After the longest and most stressful two-week wait of my life, incredible news. The test finally read pregnant, but not for long. Five weeks into the pregnancy, I expected to hear our baby's heartbeat. Instead, silence. The doctor said I needed to force a miscarriage. I don't know why, I just felt like, not that you would be mad at me, but I didn't want to stress anyone out. Losing that pregnancy was devastating. Even worse, I hadn't told anyone in my family that I was having problems getting pregnant. I finally opened up at this point. When you finally came out and told us that you were trying and suffering like I had, I didn't even understand why you hadn't come to me in the first place. I've been there. I've been there for so long. Heather is my sister and she's absolutely right. Silence made that struggle worse. I missed out on having a support system. And also, I wasn't able to offer the best support in return. She was going through similar trials. It's just weird to think that there are two of us in one family that had to deal with this. Well, I thought it would thing. be so much easier. Heather and my brother-in-law, Justin, spent 1,329 days trying to get pregnant. IUI did not work for Heather. 13 failed IUI procedures. I did three rounds of IVF. Each one became a little more intense. It seemed like IVF wasn't going to work either. Then a pregnancy and a loss. It was our first pregnancy. And we were so excited and told our family. And it didn't last. So it was really hard. She leaned on family and her husband to help her through this heartbreaking time. But it wasn't enough. I would be out in the stores and I would have to go home because I would start having panic attacks. Heather found a support group of other women dealing with the same struggles, but she should have been able to call me, her sister, if we had openly talked about it. This dense cluster of stem cells, that's gonna become the baby. Two failed IVF attempts. At this point, Heather and Justin needed something new, so they changed fertility doctors and started seeing the team at Shady Grove Fertility in Chesterbrook, Chester County. I just wanted to give it one last shot. The Shady Grove physicians were able to retrieve Heather's eggs and create six embryos. For Heather, from the group of eggs we got for her, I was expecting only to find two or three normal ones. She was super lucky. She got five normal ones to be able to work with. At the age of 37, Heather now had five more chances to get pregnant. We put one in and we're pregnant. We're finally pregnant. <laughs> Our first ultrasound, we heard the heartbeat and we'd never made it that far. And every day I'm just thankful that I've made it as far as I have. A baby girl coming this January, growing up with a cousin that will be just two and a half months older. You're feeling your baby move? Oh, oh, that's baby. wonderful. Baby boy. It did take some time for me to heal emotionally and physically after my miscarriage. The other issue is that if you've had a loss, this next pregnancy is super scary for that woman until they've reached that point and even afterwards uh, beyond that point of where they had the loss. And they're called rainbow babies, these new babies coming in and those rainbow babies are very, very special. Tom and I were ready for our second IUI treatment. This one worked. We heard the heartbeat of our very own rainbow baby in my belly. That just keeps growing and growing. Your measurements should be equal to the number of weeks that you are. And growing. It took 40 years to find him, but thanks to DNA testing, Susan Kissinger's family just got a whole lot bigger. Susan has lived in Lancaster County for almost her entire life and says she always knew she was a bit different from her siblings, but never knew why. Then at 18 years old, she found out she was the daughter of someone else. This morning, we're taking a closer look at how Susan used Ancestry.com to track down her biological dad and five half brothers. It's said a picture is worth a thousand words, but these photos scattered on a table and these ones on a stand in a completely different home, their story is worth a lifetime of untold stories. The people in these photos never knowing their tales 
would one day cross the same path. It was scary because you don't know, are they going to accept you or not? Susan Kissinger says growing up, she always knew she was a bit different from her siblings, but her last name, Bullock, was the same. However, the man she thought was her dad had the last name Miller. So when she turned 18 years old, she says she got up the nerve to ask her mom the question, who am I? With respect for my mom and dad, that um, I never asked again who my dad was. Sue found out her dad wasn't really her dad, but after she asked, he adopted her, making Sue a Miller. She buried the burning question, who is my real dad, for years. That was until her mom died in 2011. Once she passed, um, my sister, Tammy, said, now we're going to find out who your dad is. And that's when the journey began. The journey to getting the answers she craved took 40 years. The sisters had to overcome some hurdles. That's because when Sue's mom was pregnant with her, she moved the family to California. Since it was, she was born in California, and that is a closed um, adoption records, we were unsuccessful with that, although we tried several routes for several years. After seven years of calling old schools and attempting to track down birth certificates, the sisters said enough was enough. So they did a DNA test through Ancestry.com. And that is where we found some close relatives. And so I had emailed a number of those and Ashley DeMonte was answered me several weeks later. I figured out since she was a second cousin, I believed that it was either, um, you know, one of my grandparents was her aunt or uncle. And we brought it down to where it had to be a blood relative of mine, which was her father. In an hour or two of talking on the phone, we actually came to who we thought would have been Sue's birth father. Meet Sue's five new brothers and her biological father, Harry Smith Jr. I dated her mother, you know, for a few months. And then I had gone into service in 59, and I came home on leave. I tried to call her. Well, the phone number was disconnected. That's because she was in California, but the family did eventually move back to Lancaster County. Sue living in Lancaster and Harry in the Willow Street area. That's about six miles away meaning Sue and Harry spent years shopping at the same stores, walking the same streets, and visiting the same restaurants. If it wouldn't have been for this here new DNA, probably never would have caught up, you know, we'd have never met. Sue and Harry took a DNA test to confirm what they already suspected to be truth. Said it came back 9.9.9.9. There's no doubt. I said, no, there's no doubt. But Harry says the test was never needed. The minute that I seen her picture next to my sister, there was no doubt in my mind. She wouldn't have had to even take the test. She fits right in. I knew it. I know why I'm the worker I am. I know why I'm a clean fanatic. You know, I always like everything clean because the Smiths are just go-getters. It was emotional for me. I'm an emotional person. This interview with Fox 43 almost never happened for Harry. The morning we all planned to meet was almost his last. Getting ready and after a bit, I was on the floor. And uh, I was lucky to come back. I mean, uh, this thing hit me three times to bring me back. The father of five sons says he has already had 12 heart attacks in his lifetime. Thankfully, a morning spent preparing to tell the story of how his daughter found him was not his last. Now, Harry says life has given him yet another reason to keep fighting. A beautiful daughter, grandchildren, even great grandchildren that without ancestry would still be looking for this life changing answer. Take a test. I, I didn't hesitate. You know, it's good. Everything is really good about it. I mean, I'm, I'm just ecstatic about it. I knew who I was. I knew I was a Smith. That day, I knew who I was just by meeting them.